Hootie who all my stock market gamblers welcome today it's Wednesday August 25th stock market what do you know new record high new record high Nasdaq hit a new record high today it's hit a new record high every day this week stock market only goes up we all know that so why am I keep hoping for a correction? Will it ever come? Will a correction happen? Look it. The NASDAQ just passed 15,000. Now 15,000 is a nice big round number. Now a lot of times that marks a high. A lot of times it's a blow off top. Hit 15,000. Maybe we get the correction now. Now can it go to 20,000? Absolutely it can. Let the Fed keep printing money and we'll get to 20,000 really soon. Market's not doing a whole lot today, kind of flat, but we do have those new record highs, probably get new record highs every day this week. Maybe we get a pullback. I'm hoping for that correction still. Okay, so what I want to talk today about is real estate. We got some stuff going on in real estate. You know, we got a lot of, well, I call them financial cliffs in real estate that are coming up. They're coming up relatively quickly. Now, okay, we got this eviction moratorium. Maybe it comes to an end sometime soon. Maybe it never comes to an end. Maybe people don't have to pay rent anymore. Another fiscal cliff, we have the mortgage forbearance programs. Maybe that comes to an end. Maybe not. Maybe it just keeps going forever. Now, here's the one they're talking about coming to an end. The $40 billion that the Federal Reserve subsidizes the mortgage market with every month. They buy $40 billion of mortgages to keep interest rates low. So at those house prices, prices can go higher so that housing can go up 25% a year so that your rent can go up 25% a year. They keep that buying those $40 billion worth of mortgages. Well, they're talking about tapering. Tapering, are they going to taper the $40 billion worth of mortgages? Will that mar make the housing market come in? I'm not sure. Now, what about the extra unemployment? That's coming to an end in September, a couple weeks from now. Okay, maybe that'll get the, you know, the real estate to come down a little bit. Look at what we got right now is still the battle between the tenants and the landlords. Right now the tenants, there's a lot of tenants that are employed, that are working. They just refuse to pay their rent because they don't want to be the chump. You want to be the chump? I wouldn't want to be the chump. Look at four out of five are paying, but that one that's not paying, he's getting away scot-free. Here in California, Governor Newsom, he's going to pay 12 months of your back rent, 3 months of your forward rent, 15 months of rent for free. Why would anyone pay rent when Governor Newsom says he's going to pay it for you? I don't know why people pay rent. The governor's going to pay it. Oh, look at this is coming to an end at some time. Some point it's going to come to an end. What I want to talk today about is a couple of things. Okay, so in Oregon, they passed a law. They passed a law that, well, that buyers can no longer send love letters to the seller. Now, this is funny. This has become a trend in real estate in the last, I don't know, three, four, five years has been going on where <laughs> the buyer of the home, they write this love letter telling the seller how much they love their house. And they put a picture of themselves on, on this letter. They put a picture of them and their wife and their two kids, and they tell them how they're going to live in the home and raise their family. These are love letters sent. Now, why did they outlaw them? They outlaw them in Oregon. They say, no, you cannot send a love letter. Well, the Fair Housing Administration. Anyways, they're saying this is this is not fair housing. They're saying that this you could be prejudiced. You could be a racist. You could see if the people are white, black, or purple. You, they're saying this is illegal. You cannot send love letters anymore in the state of Oregon. Now, I'm a real estate broker now. It's always funny. Every time I, I've got a seller here and I, <laughs> a love letter comes in from the buyer, you know what I tell my seller? Now, this is wrong to tell my seller. I go, they're willing to pay more. If they write you a love letter, that means that their offer is not their final offer. They will raise the offer and they will raise the offer again. They might stop sending you love letters, but they will pay more for that house. I think it's a bad idea for a buyer to send the seller a love letter. I don't have my buyers do that unless they demand to do that. But anyways, it's been outlawed. 
Now, another thing I want to talk about is Zillow. Zillow, it's like the, 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 the big elephant in the real estate stocks, right? Okay, so what does Zillow do? Well, Zillow, they, they, they uh, collect leads from sellers and they sell them to us real estate people. Now, how do they get the leads? How do they get people to give them their information to get the leads? Well, they have this thing called, well, anyways, it's, it's an instant quote. Instant quote from Zillow. You put in your property address in your name and they will give you a quote to buy your house today. Now, in the when they started this program, they were offering about 30% below the market. Say your home was worth, you know, 500,000, they might offer you 300,000, maybe 350 for it, okay? And no one took the offers. They but Zillow didn't care. Why didn't they care? Because they could sell your name and they could sell your home address to 10 realtors in the area that would pay 2, 3, 400 dollars each for that name and address because that was a person that was thinking of selling. And us real estate brokers, we pay for that we pay information we will pay a lot for those leads so Zillow was making money right and their stock was going like this but then Zillow got this idea was said hey why do we not we're offering 30 percent below the market why don't we offer the market and buy the homes we'll compete against open door open door is another company that likes to buy homes they buy homes and they flip them okay so zillow's been buying all these homes at list price or above and you know what <laughs> zillow's finding out that they can't sell the homes higher than they paid now it's funny real estate is it's kind of nasty when you buy houses and and you get in there and you have to fix them up and you have to clean them. You have to get them ready for sale. It's a nasty business, but it's very hands-on. Now, Zillow, they don't have the manpower. They think they can just sit at their computer and give you an instant quote, send you a check. Now they own the house. But what do they do now? Well, they got to clean it. They got to paint it. They got to fix the floors. They got to fix the toilets. They have a lot of these homes that they paid above list price for. Zillow, got this thing in their mind that we can pay above list you know and well what are we going to do with the homes well right now a lot of them are sitting vacant they can't sell them they can't sell them for above their price so now they're starting to drop the price they're selling them for less than they bought them for now to me this is not a good business model let's see let me see i'm going to buy the home for eight hundred thousand i'm going to sell it for seven hundred thousand after i put fifty thousand into it well, how am I going to make money? Oh, we'll do it on volume. We'll do, we'll just do it on volume. Look at a lot of companies out there. They're trying to sell $20 bills for $10. And yeah, they can get the volume going. But Zillow is losing money hand over fist on this. Now, if you look at their stock peaked out in, uh, back in February, I believe it was over $200 at the time. Well, look at since February, what has the stock market done? It's done nothing but go higher and go higher and go higher. But what's Zillow stock done? It's nothing but crashed every month lower and lower. It's it's below 100 now. It's already half off from just where it was in February. I'm telling you, if they don't change their business policy, they're going to go broke selling these $20 bills for $10. You cannot buy houses at $800,000 and sell them at $600,000 and make money doing it. Now, Zillow thinks they're going to do this. They think they're going to make it up on volume. I don't think so. I don't think they're going to be successful at it. Zillow, I'm not saying to short it. I'm just saying watch it fall. But it might be a sign of what's happening in the real estate market. People are overbidding for houses and the market's shifting now. The market's shifting to where they're staying on the market longer, where more inventory's coming on the market. And you know what? You know what? There is a lot of vacant homes out there. Look at the reason they're vacant. People, you know, companies like Zillow, they buy them and they have these vacant houses they're not renting them out they're not in the landlord business they want to flip these houses but they can't get them sold at the price they bought them so they sit there vacant why else are there vacant properties a lot of landlords won't rent their houses out there leaving them vacant why because the tenant can move in and not pay rent until this eviction moratorium ends landlords don't want to rent houses now right now 6.5 million people 
6.5 million units are behind on their rent. Now, when this eviction moratorium ends and people got to start paying their rent, you might have 6.5 million new properties listed for sale. Look at a lot of these are mom and pop landlords. 72% of them are mom and pop landlords. They don't want to be landlords anymore. The government ruined it for them. Look at, they say they have to give it away for free. Do you want to give it away for free? I don't think so. So what are they going to do? They let their house sit vacant right now until the eviction moratorium goes away. I don't think we have a housing shortage. The other thing we got is all these baby boomers. Baby boomers are starting to sell their house. Look at I'm I'm going on a listing appointment right after I do this. Anyways, a lady, she's selling her house for a million and a half. What she's doing? She's moving into, well, it's a, a senior community. Let's be polite here. A senior community costs her about 500000 It's a little manufactured home, but her kids kids are out. She's got grandkids. She doesn't need the big house anymore all to herself. A lot of the baby boomers are starting to sell their houses. They're, look at one in four houses are owned by baby boomers. I don't know, it's something like 25 million homes that are going to come on the market in the next 10, 15 years. There's not going to be a housing shortage. The demographics changing. House price is very risky to be buying right here unless you absolutely have to. Now, I'm a real estate broker. I'm supposed to say, yeah, great time to buy, great time to buy, great time to lose your ass if you buy right here. That's what I'm telling you. Look at, I would not be a buyer. I would be a seller and I'd be getting out as quick as you can. I'm not saying to sell your principal residence. Everybody needs a place to live, but you got rental properties. Rental properties, I, I, I'm not in that rental game anymore. I used to be. I used to be in the house flipping game. That's why I know Zillow's in trouble. Zillow, you, house flipping game is nasty and you need to have local expertise. Zillow is a big national company, right? They don't have, like, they don't know what a house sells for in Sydney, Nebraska. They don't know. They have no clue. <laughs> a lot of people haven't been to Sydney, Nebraska. But hey, anyways, it's very localized and you need local talent. You need expertise. And Zillow's trying to do it on a huge volume, huge national scale, where they just go in and buy these houses above list price and they're getting their ass handed to them. And it's reflected in their stock market price, 50% off. But don't buy it. It's going lower by prediction. I'm Tall Mike. If you like this stuff, give me the thumbs up. If you really like it, punch the subscribe button. Look at it. It's Wednesday. Get out there. Have have a great day. We'll see what the market does and hopefully we'll talk later in the week. Bye-bye now.